So I'm guessing if you clicked on this video, you suck at Lee code. Now I'm not trying to make assumptions, but I mean, come on. But that's okay, most of us do, at least initially. So let's go over the biggest reasons why you may be struggling. First time. <laughs> now the first issue I found is getting ahead of yourself. Let me know if this sounds familiar. It's time to prep for interviews. You sign up for LeetCode. You start with an easy question, let's say to some. And after working on it for a while, you realize this is kind of hard, but you keep going through it, you struggle. After 10 to 20 minutes, you finally come up with a janky brute force solution that passes all of the test cases. Wow, you got it. All that confidence that was going away while you were trying to solve it and struggling on it finally rushes back. You feel like, wow, I could take on another problem. You go up all the way to a medium problem, let's say threesome. And then it didn't take too long for you to realize that although this problem seems very similar, you are miserably failing and getting wrecked. And there's no way you're gonna be able to get the right answer. And never in your life did you feel so violated by a computer. And you spend the rest of your night binge watching Naruto, eating a tub of ice cream, knowing you will never be good at Lee code. You must be so embarrassed! Okay. I'm gonna be honest, maybe the last part's just me. But I want you to know, I understand. This isn't new. It's always hard to get better at something that you're new at. Maybe it's not the case for some people, but for most people, it's true. I mean, just think about the time you first learned how to code. If it was Java or C++, you probably got destroyed by Hello World. I know I did. That's why I recommend learning Python as a beginner. If you want more convincing, go check out my whole video on it. Anyways, aside from shameless plugging, I understand. If you got past Hello World, you can get past this. It'll just take some time, which leads me to the next problem, starting from the right place. You see, when you first learned how to code, you first learned the program Hello World. So when you first learn how to solve algorithms and solve leak code problems, you need to start with the Hello World for leak code. So not hello world in the literal sense, but it's the ability to solve basic programming tasks. So let's take a look at a basic programming task. Given an array, find the element in the array. If the array is guaranteed to contain this element, so given the input as a string and the array and then I want you to return the index where you find this element that is guaranteed to be inside of the array. So if you're at all ready to start solving leak code problems, this should seem pretty simple to you. You would just iterate through the array with a for loop and look for that exact element that you were given. Once you find a match, you'll just return the index you're on. So this itself is an algorithm. It's very basic and it's very hard to find algorithms as simple as this on LeetCode, which is why it really matters where you start. On LeetCode, problems are labeled easy, medium, and hard, but we all know if you're at all familiar with LeetCode, that's not always true. Easy problems can sometimes feel hard, medium problems can sometimes feel hard, and hard problems can sometimes feel extra hard. So let's look at a modified version of the programming example we were just talking about, and let's make it a little more complicated. What if it's not guaranteed to find the word that that we supplied in the beginning. And we just want to return true or false if we found it or not. The problem becomes vastly different. And if you're not familiar with solving these basic problems, then it's going to take a lot to think about how you would really figure this out. Since you're not guaranteed to find the word, now you got to actually see what you do after you're done looping through the entire array and not find a word. What do you do then? You have to consider a lot more factors that could happen now that you're not just waiting to find the word and return its index. But after completing the first one, you're a little familiar with some of the things you have to do. You know you still have to go through a for loop, loop through the array, check if the current word matches the word that you desire to find, and if it does, you know to return true right there. But if it doesn't, and we finish going through the array, we know this doesn't happen in the previous algorithm, but we should probably return false here because now we know we got through an entire array and we didn't find it. So that brings me to my point. Start easy and gradually work your way up. As you can see, we're able to solve the second problem a lot faster 
faster because we already solved the first problem. But if we didn't solve the first problem, probably the second problem wouldn't come as naturally to us because we wouldn't have been as familiar with that kind of problem solving and wouldn't have already had an algorithm in mind. A few important takeaways is this is not gonna happen overnight. Sometimes a concept takes a little while to get. So if you're not getting it right away, that's okay. But I'd say the biggest takeaway is familiarize yourself with the basic skills so you can finally apply them to these more complex problems that you're gonna see on Leco. So the next mistake to avoid is doing completely random problems on Leco. Do not do this, please don't do this. It is probably the biggest waste of time because what happens is you go on leak code, you start a random problem, you start trying to solve it, you're spending precious time trying to solve it and it turns out to be some random problem with test cases that never pass that no company would actually ask. So all that time wasted on no results. One thing to note is you can see the score of how many people actually voted that this is a good problem. And that could give you an idea about how helpful that problem actually could be in your studies, but you can't always trust this. You might be able to back it up with what the discussion boards are saying because they have a lot to say in the comments. So go ahead and check that out as well. Anyways, if we're not supposed to just do random problems on LeetCode, what's the solution? Curated lists. Yes, curated lists are created by people who determined what problems were most helpful for them when they prepared for their interviews. If you're not working on a curated list, it's like going on a road trip across the country without Google Maps. And we don't condone this boomer energy. Without curated lists, yeah, maybe you'll get some problems that are helpful initially, but after a while, without any proper guidance, you could end up doing the same problem over and over again, or do unnecessary problems, which will just make your prep take longer and waste your time. And nobody wants that. So if somebody already crafted a list of helpful questions, why would you bother figuring them out on your own, especially when you didn't even interview yet? You don't have an idea of what questions companies are actually asking. You're just literally guessing. It's possible to get a job just by doing a hundred effective leak code problems. And at the same time, it's also possible to get rejected if you only worked on a thousand ineffective leak code problems. And that's a lot of time you're putting in to solving these problems. So really make sure you're using curated lists. And since time is so precious, it's really important to try avoid solving problems for more than 20 minutes. 20 minutes is enough time to grasp the question and attempt to come up with a solution. Any more than that is really just a waste of time, especially in the beginning when you're really just trying to figure out patterns and learn basic problem solving skills. You would make much better use of your time by actually looking over the solution, getting an understanding of what you did wrong, what you did correctly, and really trying to better your fundamental knowledge as well. Just be sure to come back to those problems that you struggled on later so you can then try them again and most likely go through them a lot more confidently with your extra experience. Keep in mind, hard problems on LeetCode usually take more than 20 minutes to solve, but at the 20 minute point, you can probably tell whether you're actually gonna be able to solve it or whether you're still not close to a solution. Another mistake is not drawing out the problem before solving it. Now this is more helpful for certain problems, but I still think it helps pretty much with any problem you're working on. I actually recommend you buying a whiteboard for a few dollars online, but you can also just use a notebook too. The whiteboard is nice because you can save paper and just use the whiteboard for every problem you're solving. Anyways, back to what I'm saying is visualizations will make it much easier to figure out what you have to do in solving the problem. Here's an example. Think about reversing a linked list. How much easier would it be if you can just draw out the linked list and reverse it in the drawing? Okay, so maybe you don't know what a linked list is, but it's essentially an object that stores some data. We can call them nodes and also has a pointer to other nodes. This forms a linked list of nodes, hence linked list. With that being said, if you couldn't draw out the linked list, think about how you would possibly reverse the linked list. It seems a little complicated I mean, if I have to do it in my head, I probably wouldn't even get it right. So let's actually draw out the solution. Who cares about the code? Let's just draw a linked list getting reversed and it'll probably make a lot more sense and you can base your code on that. As you can see, drawing out the problem initially makes it a lot easier to solve it. 
Another tip to keep in mind is that if a question doesn't have a solution or if the solution is not cutting it for you, there are a lot of other great solutions on the discussion board that you can get to by clicking here or you can go ahead and Google search the actual question and there's a lot of great resources out there that are answering the question for you, such as Geeks for Geeks. You can probably find a solution already here on YouTube because there's a lot of answers out here on YouTube maybe answered by myself as well. Wink, wink. However, if you're looking for recommendations other than me, I know Neatcode makes a lot of great, clear solutions out there. They're also curated problems, so might as well check them out. So the next thing is to actually make sure you know your data structures. And you should probably be doing this before you try solving leak code problems, but I understand after you learn a specific data structure, you might want to solve some leak code problems related to it, which makes sense. But to those that don't even know what a data structure is, data structures are a way of structuring data, hence the name. In fact, many curated lists are split up by the data structures topic they cover. You may also find in books like Elements of the Programming Interview or Cracking the Coding Interview, which do have a great curated list of questions and split up sections of technical interview questions, usually by data structures or type of algorithms. Now for easier problems out there, you probably only need to make use of an array or you might not even have to use a data structure. It's more about just coding through. But keep in mind, there are other data structures out there that may be more efficient or necessary for solving specific kind of problems. A length list, as we mentioned before, is actually a specific kind of data structure. I mean, think about it as your gym badges in Pokemon. You can't just fight the Elite Four if you're missing one of the badges. If you just got your array badge, that's great. You can only solve array-related leak code problems now. You can't just go on and try to solve linked list problems. No, you don't got your linked list badge. But in order to actually get your linked list badge, you have to know how to reverse a linked list and solve a few other problems related to linked lists. And that that requires understanding how a linked list works. I also recommend implementing the data structure on your own before trying to solve the leak code related problems to it so you can really solidify your understanding of it. In fact, some interviews even ask you to implement certain data structures, maybe more complex ones than the ones you usually use to solve problems. For example, I had to solve making a queue from just stacks or creating a LRU cache, which is essentially just a hash function, array, and linked list all working together. But for now, the most important data structures to learn for interviews are going to be arrays, hash maps, stacks, queues, linked lists, binary trees, graphs, and binary heaps. Learning each one takes individual time and you should be able to implement each data structure without an issue before solving a problem with it. And that brings me to my next point. Solving a problem can be solved in many different ways. I think this is pretty commonly known across coding. There's many ways to do things, but for interview sake, you want to do it in the most efficient way possible. Usually some ways are more optimal than others and other ways may be way less complex. You have to take your knowledge of all the data structures that you learned in the past from solving other problems and take those advantages of each possible solution and try to optimize it as much as possible space and time wise. And how do you actually do this? Well, with big O notation, which is something you should try to learn as soon as possible, because what big O allows you to do is decide how efficient something is time-wise and space-wise. You should learn this before anything because it's really important in understanding why certain algorithms and data structures are favorable to use for specific reasons under specific circumstances. Without having this knowledge on Big O, there's no way to actually weigh out whether something is more optimal or not. And you wouldn't be able to tell your interviewer why you chose to go with a solution this way rather than some other way. And there you have it. Once you know Big O, all your data structures and solve specific problems problems for each data structure, you should be able to take on almost any leak code problem thrown at you. But even then, there might be different patterns in solving problems that you did not know already. So practicing more and more leak code will always help, but make sure it's on a curated list. This should be enough for you to get on the right path to start solving leak code problems effectively.